Well, hey, everybody. Good uh, Tuesday? Today's Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. Good Tuesday to you. Uh, you might not watch this on Tuesday, so how y'all doing? This is Elise Lee's Lore. It's a custom lore. As far as I can tell on the date, it's uh, 2005. It's very similar to a Whopper Plopper. In fact, if this was made in 2005, I would have to say that this precedes the Whopper Plopper. So my client has requested the Imperial White Craw pattern with a twist. We're going to put some fluorescent orange on the head, fluorescent orange on the belly, and uh, it's going to be a craw pattern. It's going to be made for specifically musky. This is what he's going to be using it for. So, um, hey, let's make something today. Fairly simple pattern, fairly basic pattern. You guys have seen me make some craws before. This one's a little bit different. Um, we're going to be using, obviously, some bigger segmenting for scales. Um, Dr. P.H. Martin's Iridescent White. It's a little bit thicker. It's going to give it a little bit of shine and pop. Regular old opaque white. Black for the detailing later. And fluorescent orange. This should be cool. Starting out, we need to cover this bait. And we need to get the gunk off of here. So first things first. Never want to start out with gunk because it will clog up the lines in your airbrush. So we're just going to spray this entire thing. Now since I'm going to be spraying on the uh, on the spray bench directly, let's go ahead and do a couple of things here. Let's get some stuff out of harm's way. I see some possibilities with this too. Um, if I do anything else like this in the near future, I might go ahead and put some spider webbing in it, but that's not what the customer's request was for this one, um, so I'm okay with that. I've loaded the chamber with opaque white. We're just going to give it a solid cover here. I've removed the eyes, which you always want to do if you can. Uh, these eyes were not super glued in, so it was pretty easy to get them out. Now there is some taping that has to be done, just like with a Whopper Plopper. You've got to tape off this back piece. You got to tape off this right here, the blade, and you just want to give that a good coat. You can see where the epoxy was a little bit crazy, I guess, when it was initially put on. I'm not sure if Lee Lures brushes their epoxy on or whether it's dipped. I'm going to guess it was brushed. Just just a educated guess. Now, with this still on... I'm not going to flush this chamber out on the airbrush at all. I'm going to add some pearlized. So if anybody out there uses Lee's Lures, 
and knows about the history of these choppers. Um, and you guys can also check out these lures. They are custom made, hand, hand done, hand turned. Um, kind of really cool baits. But I would really be interested in knowing if these came out before the Whopper Plopper because I think the Whopper Plopper's only been out about seven or eight years. Maybe. Something like that. So leave me a comment if you guys know the history of a Lee's lure. I haven't done a whole lot of research on them. And I hadn't seen one in person until this client repaint. But it's got independent parts. Um, obviously this turns just like the Whopper Plopper does. I'm just going to run all of that out of the chamber. So we have got a good coat of white and a really good coat of a nice shiny thick pearl. And yes, this stuff is thick, this PH Martins. It's very thick, but it will shoot at a high enough pressure. My pressure, my PSI is right around 42 um, for the initial layers. And we're going to pull that all the way back to around 10 when we get into the detailing. Now, before I go ahead and flush this chamber out, I am going to start out with just a little bit of fluorescence. And I'm going to do a couple of things here. Again, make sure you guys get all the gunk off of the top of this because it looks just like that. And it's, uh, it's kind of nasty. And it'll clog up your airbrush. So I'm going to spray that directly in. And I've still got the pressure fairly high because I had these thick pearls in there. But I'm just going to come just on the nose and draw this back to the eyes. Because I really want this to blend in with the pearls. Fluorescent by itself is not a pearl paint. And then we're just going to come down and do a straight line on that belly. And where the blade is cutting the paint spray off, we're going to come back on the other side and take care of that. But you just want even lines. We'll flip this over and just even that up. So that you have a nice even belly. Maybe just a little bit more on this side. We're going to even draw this back a little further. You don't have to crush it with this color. And we're certainly not going to go all the way down on the sides and the top. But just enough to where it's very noticeable. It's going to be a nice target on the, on the face of this bait. All right. I'm going to clean this off camera. Come right back. We're going to heat set this real quick. And then we're going to start our detailing. Now, because this is a much larger bait, the head of this bait circumference is larger, my traditional cross stencils that I've hand cut are not going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a brand new backing from the Bill, La uh, Bill Lewis set lock hooks. I'm just going to come in here. Okay, and you can see we've got that little cut out so that when we bring this over, it's going to be a good fit. And it can be a little bit bigger. You just don't want it to be smaller. I'm going to notch this in a couple of places just to give it a couple of accents. Hit it with this black paint. Give it one real long one. And then maybe a couple of shorties on the side. Just like that. And then we're going to take this, just kind of score it. Because you want it to look like an actual cape does on these craws. I 
would say that that's probably a pretty good deal right there. Okay. And uh, the segments, we're going to be using this piece right here. This is a larger segment piece. And you're going to see how this goes down here in just a couple of seconds. Let's put the lid back on the exacto knife. I've had a few mishaps. Don't need to have any today. Now you can see that the paint's just a little bit tacky where I set this in before. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry just a little bit more. Now the, the black detailing on that cape, if I pull this back just a little bit further, that's going to hide that. So I'm not, I'm not too critically worried about that. But let's go ahead and dry this just a wee bit more. Went ahead and dried that just a little bit more. I want to kind of set this on to where it wraps around it just a little bit. I've got the chamber loaded with black. And that's just fine. Now just like with any crawl, it's easier, at least for me, to go from the back middle and then the sides after that. Get that a little bit darker. There we go. Same with this one. You always want to work towards it. If you work away from me, you have a tendency to smash this back end of the paper on wet paint. So always pull this down as you're working. Work towards yourself. Okay. That should be good. Set this back in the cradle just for a second. And we're going to tilt this up on its side. You always want, the, there's a couple of, one of the things that I want to say is you need, when you're working with heavier baits, you really need to have a helping hands that's got a heavy enough lead base in the back to where this thing won't topple on you. Um, what a pain if you've got a bunch of wet paint and this thing kind of falls on you. So you don't want to do that at all. Now with this, we're going to work from the very back forward. We're going to lay those stencils in just like that. So we'll get ourselves a, a good position here, maybe actually even a little bit smaller. Let's see what we got here. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to want to cut this. Now that one's perfect. These are just a little bit smaller. I am going front to back. So let's, let's go ahead and give this a shot. Start with that and bring this. back. And just do that all the way down the sides. And you're going to be overlapping. You can see what's starting to happen here, and that's exactly what you want to happen. And there you go. And the only thing that you don't have is this little piece around here. And you can actually bring that all the way up if you want the edge by just continuing this stencil around to the nose. Now you have that full cape. You can add on to the bottom part of this piece right here. Just lightly work that in. We're going to do the same thing with the other side. 
Let's flip this over the other way. There we go. Tilt that back towards myself. Now we've been using this side, we're going to flip it over and use the other side. We're going to go from this, from towards me now, away from me, since we're working on the opposite side. Feels like there might be a tiny clog in this. As long as I can get a decent spray on it, should be all right. There we go. It's doing what it's supposed to do. And then just work my way forward. just a little bit to there. We can, if there's any light spots, we can go back over that, hit it just a little bit heavier with our shade. <laughs> Throwing shade on the bait. And then do the same thing we did on the other piece, on the other side. can just lay a little bit just like that. We have a full cross stencil on both sides. I'm going to do just a little bit of shading with these eyes here. Go ahead and bring this back up. Just complete that circle. There's anything that's a little bit off kilter, we can firm up with shade. Now, because craws have a tendency to look a little bit more segmented. We're going to do a couple things here just to give it a little shade. Come back and do it the same way on this side. Just line that up. That's close to the eye. And just make the same pattern on the other side so that you have a mirror image. You can see that there's a mirror image there. And then we're going to add just a little bit of fun segmenting down the back of this as we go with some stencil. Continue that on. I've got a couple of different stencils here, and I really like to trick these things out as best I can just to give this a little bit of definition to define the 
segmented parts here. Just kind of randomize these uh, segment patterns. And maybe do something cool like that through there so that you really have a unique pattern through and through. And come over on the other side and we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to randomize it, obviously. We're going to that looks so we've got some pretty cool scaling now going on maybe even come down and hit this chin a little bit <laughs> almost gives it like a urban camo appearance you know that what they call it snow camo just hit that real easy on the other side And then if you want to just get a better defined area on this bottom, then you can just come back and do a little bit of touch up. And we're just going to add a tiny bit of touch up in here, not much, because you want good shading on this. You want to make it look like it's shaded to one side. That's the ultimate goal for patterns like this is you want it to look as natural as possible while kind of keeping it unique at the same time. It's always what we strive for. All right. Now we've got our segments. The last thing that we're going to be doing with this is segmenting this out on this back side because craws, as you'll notice, have segments top and bottom. You don't want the paint to feels like I have some sort of clog in this. I'm not real happy about it, but I know I can get through this. But we're going to give this a real good clean afterwards. And generally, on craws, the undersides have much tighter segmentation than the front sides do. And we, again, we want to be real careful around all the hook gear, the eyelets. And you want these to come and you want this to touch the other side. You want this to go all the way across. So you want to come back and line that up to make sure that it hits
on the other side. So each side should be touching. Just go right to the edge. You just need a little bit of a little patience and control as you're going through that. much does and that definitely does now if you want to get super crazy with detailing you can kind of put a little shade in the middle here yeah I've definitely got some splatter on this I'm not going to go into this but yep not happy with that and we'll do one more back here on both sides just to even this up. Come around the other side and hit that real quick, line it up, and shoot it. Going to heat set this real quick and come on back. I'm using this Uniball Vision Elite. Bringing my pen at an angle to get that signature in. Don't write hard because you'll scratch the paint. Well, let's go over and give it some eyes. We've got some eyes on there now. Got some dragon eyes. Came with these red eyes down here. These little guys right here. Um, seven, maybe seven and a half millimeter eyes. Holes are drilled perfectly. This is a good weighted bait. I just looked them up online. A little bit pricey. Um, very cool bait. Good concept. Again, um, if these things have been around pre Whopper Flopper, then I certainly know where River to Sea got their idea. So, going to be an awesome musky lure. Just give you a little walk around here all the way through. And let's get this bad boy into some clear coat. Now that we've got the eyes on, the super glue is dry, we're going to have to gently and carefully brush on epoxy on the top half of this bait. It's going to hang like this, and then we're going to dip the bottom part, but we have to take care of the top part first. I like wearing gloves for this part because it can get a little bit messy. The trick is you want an even coat and you want to be real easy around this metal more for aesthetics than anything else uh, these parts move internally so we can't dip the whole thing because it'll gum up the middle we don't want to do that so we're just gonna brush on this top half This is KBX, the diamond strength. It's a one coat application, there's no mixing. It goes on real even. It's a little finicky around temperature. You want to keep it between, well, I would keep it between 60 degrees maximum. And, uh, probably 85 top it, it likes the 70s if you can give it constant 70 low 70 temperatures I think it probably behaves the best then so we're just going to evenly brush and in the 70s this will get tacky uh, within a couple of minutes 
so we want to make sure we have everything taken care of. One thing if I notice, and I have a little extra, then we want to kind of get that off. I'm also going to do right around this top edge as well. And the reason we do that is so when we dip this, it's going to look even. So I do this exactly how I do Whopper Ploppers. The one caveat in this, the one difference, is that the eyelet in, in the, on the belly for these have got uh, independent moving parts. And I'm going to have to clean that thoroughly to get that to move after we pull this out. So it is going to take a little bit of extra cleaning because this actually has a ball bearing. So we have to be super careful when we do that. As a matter of fact, what I may do is just go ahead and brush this all the way down to that point and then just dip the nose. Because again, this will go on very evenly. And you don't want a whole bunch of yuck. And the phone rings. I decline you. Busy. This is going to look really good when it's done. I mean, they're just, they're cool lures. They're great topwater lures. And I can see where a muskie would just tear the snot out of this. And then just get that as even as we can. All the way around. And now that we are below the danger zone here, I can see why this is definitely a brushed epoxy and not dipped because of that little guy right there, that free moving ball for the belly hook. But now that we've done that, let's hang, hang that on that piece of paper right there. We can come back and dip this nose, get it right up to that point. Oh, this hook, it's going to hang from the hook, folks, but I still need to give it a drip wire so that the rest of this can cleanly go off of this bait since I have gloves on. I can just walk it over here, hang it up, and we're good to go. We're dipped, we're brushed, the blade is clean, the internal parts and mechanism is clean, everything looks pretty good. I'm not going to touch this belly uh, ball and, and eyelet at all now. We're just going to let it completely dry like it is. And we'll show you what it looks like when we're finished up and getting ready to put the belly hook back on.